The video game reviewing industry is borderline dead as hell and they have to rely on big developers to keep them relevant because they're already a dying breed. Without their relationships with these big studios, they're pretty much fucked. Look at The Last of Us Part 2. Can you really tell me with a straight face that that game was well executed? They gave that shit a 90 plus score and it won the game of the fucking year. Like it can't get more fucking obvious than that. And now you're telling me I'm supposed to take these 97s, 98s, and fucking 10 out of 10 seriously? Like get the fuck out of here, bro. Like get the fuck out of here, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> what's going on everybody it's me tony nikki here once again back bringing you guys another video and today we're taking a look at another one of these youtubers with brain dead and moronic takes about elden ring being bad even though i never played it and elden ring sucking because the reviews for it are apparently fake and no one can say anything truthful about the game so if you guys are down for that you ready for that let's get into another one of these bad videos over here with their stupid takes this one is by the likes of a YouTuber named Triggered Senpai who is infamous for doing takes like this. Of course, it's always the ones who are infamous for saying stupid stuff that put up stupid takes. So, without me further digressing, let's get right into this video because it's a doozy. One of the most overrated games to come out in the last year or so is Elden Ring, and I can't really understand why because based off of what I played, Elden Ring is pretty much Dark Souls 3.5 or 4 if that's where you want to take it. The only thing that Elden Ring really does that separates itself from Dark Souls 3 is the shield parry mechanic, the spear summonings, the horse, and the open world. Oh yeah, and the stealth mechanic. You take these things away and the shit is just a Dark Souls 3 DLC. There's also power stancing, there's many different areas, new kind of freaking enemies, bosses, and all that. Okay, there's power stancing for every single weapon in the darn game, alright? There's the freaking, uh, what was it, the weapon arts that you can put on certain, like, weapons or gear and everything that allows you to, like, throw out a wind blade, do a bunch of whole other stuff, summon enemies with it. Like, come on, dude. I don't get this freaking mentality that people come up with that where they're like Elden Ring is just Dark Souls 3.5. Like, I'm convinced they they haven't put more than at least 10 hours into this darn game like they be saying, man, for them to come up with something so stupid and blatantly false. That's just spreading misinformation around for people to be like some, oh, well, Elden Ring is just Dark Souls 3.5. <laughs> it's just more the same. And it's like, yes and no, it is more of the same because it's just another, you know, great from soft game but it's not the exact same darn thing where it's just repeated bosses and all that other darn stuff there is so much new content in here besides just the open world and the horse riding <sighs> Let's move on. Which is not a bad thing because if you're a huge fan of the Souls series, then you probably don't give a fuck about anything of what I'm saying right now. You're just happy to have another Souls game. But someone like me who frequents the Souls games here and there, I just don't believe in spending 60 plus dollars on a game that's damn near similar to the game I've already played. Dude, do you see your background fucking footage? You're literally over here playing Call of Duty Zombies, okay? You're literally over here playing Call of Duty where you're running around the same darn map in zombies, okay? Shooting the most brain dead and basic boring enemy types to zombies, okay? With the same gun and stuff of that of your darn choice, alright? And you want to talk about how you don't like spending freaking 60 or more dollars on the same uh, game every darn year. And yet you're over here playing Call of Duty, which is the most cookie cutter franchise besides Madden. I'll just wait till the shit goes on sale. But in this case, I went and bought Elden Ring because of the hype that was surrounding it. Also, I'm a fan of the Soul series, so like, why the fuck not, right? Plus, the reviews that were coming in for this game were fucking godly-like, and after playing 5 plus hours of Elden Ring, I cannot for the life of me figure out why this game was so well received. Elden Ring, aka Elden Snooze, aka Elden Z's, aka The Horse Simulator, 95% of the 5 plus hours I put into that game was spent running around on my horse farming souls, getting armor and weapons, and just hoping to find some shit to do. Wait, but you just said that 95% of the time you was running around on your horse getting souls and farming weapons and armor. 
But now you're over here talking about some how you was also looking for shit to do. Like, do you not realize how stupid and fucking hypocritical that sounds, okay? You literally just described yourself doing something in the game. You said you were riding around on your horse, collecting souls, and getting weapons and gear. That's doing something. Like, do these people realize what the hell they be saying before they spout stuff out their mouth? I even checked out some Twitch streams to see if anyone was doing anything interesting with this game, and lo and behold, they were doing the exact same shit as me, running around on a horse, hitting shit, with the hopes of finding something to do. I literally came across a Twitch streamer who was literally begging to find a dungeon or a cave to raid while they was running around on their horse. Once again, if you're running around on your horse hitting shit, which I'm guessing you mean like killing enemies and stuff, what the fuck does that mean you're doing? Okay, w what does that mean? It means you're doing something in Elden Ring, man. Okay, stop contradicting yourself. The world feels empty a lot of times with no sense of direction, which will give off the impression that the game is boring. Bro, you should be the last one talking about a game is boring and fucking empty when you're literally over here running around shooting the same basic zombie type enemies in a fucking Call of Duty zombies mode. Which it is a lot of times. I can't tell you how many times I fell asleep on the controller while running around on my horse to only wake up and get game banged by a bunch of random ass enemies. A lot of the areas in this game look the fucking same and the ones that do look different, they have this dullish tone to them that literally begs the player to fucking yawn like this shit is like nyquil on joysticks i'm guessing you were expecting a fucking ubisoft game where there's a bunch of quest markers and everything all over your freaking hud and then there's a bunch of generic quests to do like oh go follow this guy like a freaking trailing mission or go kill like 15 enemies and then report back to me or go collect this set amount of fucking materials and just do these same quests over and over again across this big map that has 30% of content, and then the, the rest of the 70% of it is just complete shit, and then there's microtransactions and stuff in it to help you level up faster. I'm guessing that's what you was expecting from Elden Ring, right? And then you go on to say that Elden Ring areas in the game look the exact same, and the ones that don't look the same look like what you just showed right there. And yet you're literally over here playing this fucking Call of Duty Zombies mode in the background where you're running around the same boring basic map with the same boring basic enemies that can't even hit you. They have the most brain dead AI ever and you're just running around shooting them with a gun. Okay? They can't even damage you. And you want to talk about how Elden Ring has the same map and stuff or it has the same maps and that is boring. <sighs> A lot of people like to say that Elden Ring is a perfect mixture of Dark Souls and Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I find to be a huge issue because I think Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the most boring and tedious games ever. Like that shit is Nightquill on joysticks as well. Dude, the only thing that's like Nightquill right now is your fucking shit reveal because it's putting me to sleep. <laughs> But to an even greater degree because you can't even walk around with your sword in the rain because you'll get hit by lightning. On top of that, your weapon breaks in five fucking swings. Look, Zelda Breath of the Wild is easily one of the most overrated games of all time, and I have a separate video on that coming soon. But the point I was trying to make is that it makes sense that people compare Zelda Breath of the Wild to Elden Ring because they both are fucking boring and they suffer from almost the same things, an empty, uninteresting open world. Now personally, I prefer Elden Ring's world over Breath of the Wild's world because at least in Elden Ring, they have some cool shit to look look at and fight every now and then plus their world is not as tedious as breath of the wilds world so yeah that's also a plus as well now i want to get into these goofy ass reviews because i'm of the mindset that nothing is perfect out there or even damn that perfect anything with a 97 98 or up or even just a 10 out of 10 look i'm automatically disqualifying that shit and i'm going to test it out for myself <laughs> You say you automatically disqualify it, yet you're over here playing fucking Call of Duty in the background, which is a franchise that is known for getting 10 out of 10s and 9 out of 10s by shitty game reviewers, okay?
because video game reviewers are the last motherfuckers you want to trust when it comes to video game reviews. Shit, not even just them. Motherfuckers on Twitter, YouTube, you can't trust their opinions either because most of them motherfuckers are hype beasts and they just want to fit into a popular trend or some shit. A lot of video game reviewers are biased as hell and will give a bad game a high score just so that they can keep their industry relationships intact, especially if the game is from a big developer. The video game reviewing industry is borderline dead as hell and they have to rely on big developers to keep them relevant because they're already a dying breed. Without their relationships with these big studios, they're pretty much fucked. I never understand motherfuckers who sit over here and say that, oh, well, you shouldn't trust game reviewers and you shouldn't trust YouTubers who give their opinions and stuff on games either because they're just sellouts and stuff. And companies and publishers just pay them money to say whatever the hell nice things they can about their game or whatever, yada, yada, yada. And you can't trust other people who give their opinions either. Oh, but you can trust mine. This game right here, yeah, it sucks and you probably shouldn't go buy it. Like, you realize that you fall into this fucking category as well as people you shouldn't trust when it comes to reviewing stuff. If you make a review on a game and say you don't like it when others give reviews on games because you feel that they're just biased and stuff with it, um, you realize you fall into that same category as well, right? Which means I shouldn't trust anything that you fucking say about a game either, which is really how it should be anyway. People should go off of their own personal opinions and preferences instead of just following the darn herd of what other people say. They should just go out and get a product yourself. Look at The Last of Us Part 2. Can you really tell me with a straight face that that game was well executed? They gave that shit a 90 plus score and then won game of the fucking year. Like it can't get more fucking obvious than that. And now you're telling me I'm supposed to take these 97s, 98s, and fucking 10 out of 10 seriously? Like get the fuck out of here, bro. Like get the fuck out of here, bro. Oh my god, you want to use The Last of Us Part 2 as an example of you shouldn't trust critics and what they say when it comes to game reviews? Yeah, I do understand that part, but this is fucking Elden Ring we're talking about. Did you look at the user score on Metacritic as well? It's also pretty darn high. Here, look. Look at this. Do you see a single 5.7? Okay, do you see a 5.7 right there where it says the user score at? All right. And then you see the Metacritic score as well. It doesn't even come close to The Last of Us Part 2, which I think as well is a complete dog shit game. But it's okay if you like it. But the critics rated that 10 out of 10s like it was no tomorrow. But the user scores, well, the people spoke. And they spoke about how they didn't like the game, as you can see by the scores. And now you can see over here with Elden Ring that the scores are pretty darn high on both sides because the people like the game as well. Elden Ring launched with mad buzz and glitches and they're out here giving it 10 out of 10s. Like how does that shit make any sense? A 95 to 100 score is a close to perfect to a perfect game. If your game has a shit ton of buzz and glitches to the point where it ruins the experience of the game, then the game is not a 95 to 100 or even a 10 out of 10. No, it didn't. Elden Ring did not launch with a ton of bugs. It launched with a few only. And yeah, I understand where you're coming from, where you're saying that a game that has bugs in it shouldn't be getting no freaking 10 out of 10s or be called a darn masterpiece. Well, I feel like if the bugs don't really impact the overall experience and you're still able to have a great time with the game, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But I understand where you're coming from, and they should definitely be fixed. But the thing with Elden Ring is it didn't even launch with a ton of bugs. It launched with a few. They weren't game breaker or anything. It was just the stuttering issues and the darn frame rate and stuff in the open world and when you fought certain type of enemies. Okay? And FromSoft and Bandai Namco fixed those ASAP. Not exactly ASAP, but they fixed those as soon as they could. And now everything is all freaking fine. Now the combat in the game, whenever you do run into an enemy or a boss, is pretty fun except it can get real repetitive at times whenever you fight against a boss. Like you'll spend the majority of the fight dodging and rolling from their attacks than actually fighting them. Which I guess is an issue with all Souls games that I pretty much have. I feel like you never actually fucking played a Souls game before, okay? Because that's what you're supposed to do in a Souls game is to dodge the enemy's attacks, read their patterns and movements, look for an opening, okay? Block when you can, and then get some hits in when you feel an opening is there. Like, what the fuck was the point right here? This is pretty much all the Souls games. It's been the formula since Demon Souls. I guess you can call them shits the duck and roll simulator. 
you know, it's funny how you sit here and brand this the duck and roll simulator because you want to know what I, I'm a brand Call of Duty as right here, especially the one that you're playing in the background. I brand that as the shoot enemies with the most basic and dumb AI ever while running around a boring and, and, and uh, lifeless map simulator. And I know there's going to be people in the comment section saying, oh, maybe open world games just aren't for you, which isn't true at all because I like open world games. I just don't like open world games like Elden Ring and Zelda Breath of the Wild because their open worlds require the player to have some type of imagination or creativity to have fun with it. Then I feel like you must probably like Ubisoft games if you're over here saying how you don't like Elden Ring type games or Breath of the Wild type open world games. I feel like you like those darn games with a bunch of shit microtransactions in them, okay? A boring and tedious map with boring repetitive quests and everything. That seems like your type of open world game from what I'm getting. If Elden Ring doesn't even appeal to you. But overall, Elden Ring is an alright game. It's one of those games where if I knew what I was getting myself into ahead of time, then I just would have waited for the shit to be on sale. But due to the hype and due to me being somewhat of a Souls fan, I gave in to it and I spent the $65. Plus, I mean, $65 really ain't shit to me, but in hindsight, it would have been smarter for me to just wait for the shit to be on sale for like $35 to $40. Because, I mean, I don't really think it's worth $65. Especially coming from a person who played damn near all all the souls games especially dark souls 3 because i'm pretty much looking at this shit like it's a dlc expansion pass oh my god i love how you sit here and say that you didn't want to buy this darn game at full price and that you would have rather waited for it to be half off instead of spending 60 to 65 dollars on this darn game and look at the gameplay you're playing in the background if i find out that you spent full fucking price on this call of duty darn game which would be about 60 to 70 darn dollars and you want to sit here and complain that elden ring is boring and tedious and lifeless then i have nothing else to say i'm just gonna disregard your entire uh freaking opinion okay like at the end of the day i really don't care what you spend your darn money on but when you come up with shit takes like this man all right, you cannot be freaking contradicting your darn self like this, okay? You're over here playing one of the most cookie cutter and basic franchises ever since Black Ops 2. That was the last great COD game. But A, it is what it is. If you never played the Souls game, especially Dark Souls 3, then I recommend that you play this game because I'm pretty sure you'll be one of those people that say, oh my God, this is the second coming of Breath of the Wild. Cause that seems to be the sentiment for this game around fucking social media and pretty much everywhere else. So what did we learn today, people? That Elden Ring is complete fucking garbage. It's overrated, okay? The critics lied about it, all right? The user score probably doesn't matter because who cares what the people actually say? It's all about the critics, okay? And Call of Duty, well, judging by his gameplay in the background, which is Call of Duty, I'm guaranteeing you that he probably thinks Call of Duty is worth the full freaking 65 to 70 darn dollars for it. So at the end of the day, people, what did we learn? That Elden Ring is complete boring garbage and that you guys shouldn't go out and buy it. Oh, man. It's always the reviews like this. If it's not a freaking review about how the darn game is too hard and they don't like it, it's insulting the players and saying that they suck and that this game sucks and you shouldn't darn buy it. Or if, that, or if it's not that, then it's, oh, well, Elden Ring is just boring, tedious, and lifeless. <sighs> These Elden Ring hate reviews will never stop, it seems. This is how it is with, you know, a popular and good game is, you know, nowadays. Everybody just got to come out of the damn woodworks and try and hate on it. Anyway, with that being said, this is Mitsuni Nika. I'll see you guys in the next one. I've been counting down the days, counting down the days to get out. I've been looking for a way, looking for a way from this town. You're too far away, you're too far away to help me now So I'm counting down the days, counting down the days to get out Cause I need to learn to